In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily test car, boat, jet ski, motorcycle, scooter, and other ignition coils. To demonstrate in this video, I have three different types. This one here is from a Yamaha four-cylinder jet ski. This is off of a V6 2.7 liter Hyundai Sonata engine. And over here, this is off of an older boat. All three of these coils are 12 volts, designed to operate between 12 and 15 volts. If you have a 24 volt system, then you're going to have a 24 volt ignition coil. The ignition coils all work the same. They take a low voltage DC pulse and step it up to a very high voltage pulse in the tens of thousands of volts in order to fire your spark plug. Inside each one of these, you're going to have an iron core and on the primary side, which is the low voltage side, 12 to 15 volts, you're going to see wire that looks like this, enamel wire, and you can see that it's fairly thick. You're going to have fewer turns of this thicker wire on the primary side, and for the high voltage winding side to fire the spark plug, you're going to have a lot of turns of very thin wire, like you see right here. This wire is as thin as your hair. The two coils on the left are filled with epoxy around the windings, and this one over here is oil filled. And the purpose of the oil is to keep those copper windings cool. The cooler you keep the windings, the longer the life of the ignition coil. Heat is one factor that damages these coils over time. The other factor is the plastic materials that are used. They're dielectric, or that means they block the high voltage from leaking out through the plastic. Over time, the plastic can lose that dielectric quality and you could start having the high voltage leak in between the inside of this connector here and the plastic body. And that's going to cause a rough idle and all kinds of other problems. Over here, this one says use with external resistor. Like you see right here, this is a one ohm 10 watt resistor. And the purpose of that resistor is to reduce the amount of current going into the primary winding of the coil. When you reduce the amount of current, you're going to reduce the heating in the coil and you're going to greatly extend the life of the ignition coil. Now there's three different methods that you can use to make sure that the ignition coil is working properly. So let me show you each one, one at a time, starting with the Yamaha jet ski ignition coil. If you take a look at the inside right over here, you're going to see there's two terminals and these go to the primary winding inside the ignition coil. The high voltage winding with the thinner wire, one side is connected to the negative and the other end is right over here that you would connect to the spark plug. So to test this, we're going to need a digital multimeter set to ohms. Let me put this down and get the meter connected up. Over here, you can see the digital multimeter is set to measure ohms and it's on an auto range. I have two jumper wires connected to the probes, one on the black and one on the red. We're now going to connect each one of these ends to the terminals. And as you can see, the coil resistance is 1.3 ohms. You should see a very low reading between 0.5 and 2 ohms when you measure the primary side of an ignition coil. To test the high voltage output, we leave the black in place, remove the red. We're going to insert the probe all the way inside. And as you can see, we're just a little under 10,000 ohms. And that's what you want to see. You want to see a very high reading on the secondary and a very low reading on the primary. This test is going to tell you if the windings are intact, but it's not going to tell you if the winding is going to break down once the high voltage output is generated. Sometimes ignition coils over time or when they heat up, the windings inside could begin to short preventing the full high voltage output. So it's a very useful test and most of the time it's going to be good enough, but it's not going to be foolproof. Right here is the ignition coil from my Hyundai Sonata V6 2.7. Primary winding is just under one ohm. It was flashing between 0.9 and 0.8. And if you notice, this is different than the other coil. This one has two outputs on it. And the winding is not tied into the primary internally. The wire goes from this socket here. It wraps around and around and around many, many times. 
and the other end goes to this socket. When the coil's triggered, both of these get a spark at the exact same time. One side of the coil goes to one side of the V6 engine, and the other side of the coil goes to the other side of the V6 engine. In order to measure the resistance of the high voltage secondary winding, you simply measure between this opening and that opening. So let me connect this up and we'll take a look at the reading. In and reach in here. And you can see 12,400 ohms or 12.4 K ohms. All right, now let's take a look at the older oil-filled coil. You can see 1.5 ohms. Now I'm going to leave this one connected to the negative post, disconnect this and insert it into the top of the coil. With this connection made, you can now see the resistance of the high voltage secondary, 8.34 K ohm. Now what some people like to do instead of using the resistance test is simply slide the ignition coil out of the engine, leave this wire connected up so this can trigger, and they would put the spark plug inside and hold it against the engine block. Or take a tool like this for checking spark and you would connect this up to the engine ground, insert it all the way inside that boot tight, and then crank the engine. Now the only problem with this test, most people only crank it for a couple of seconds and if they see a spark they say okay it looks pretty good. Sometimes you may do this during the day in bright sunlight and you really can't tell how strong the spark is just by looking at it in daylight. And sometimes you may not get any spark at all and say up oh, the coil's no good, let's change it. When in fact the problem is not the coil, the problem is that you're not getting the pulses delivered into the primary winding. So this kind of a test, just by holding it against a block or looking at it right here, can be prone to failure. And I have seen people test this way and go out and buy new coils only to find out that they did not need them. So let me show you what you can make and use for foolproof testing. Right over here is a circuit that I put together that creates pulses into the primary winding of ignition coils. And by doing that, it will create the high voltage output. You can let this run much longer than just holding the spark plug against the engine to take a look at it. The power for the circuit is a 12 volt, one amp switching power supply. Right over here is the circuit up close. I have an on off switch that I added. Over here is a heat sink for the MOSFET that's used in this circuit. And over here is a potentiometer that adjusts the output current to the ignition coil. Let's take a look at the schematic. I placed a link to this schematic in the video description area. The circuit is fairly easy to put together and it's built around a 555 IC, also known as a 555 timer. You're going to need a bunch of resistors, quarter watt, this is a 620 ohm. Over here, this 100K is a potentiometer. Over here is a 1N4148 diode, an 82K resistor, another diode like this one, and the value over here, 0.01, to one microfarad, this is going to determine how fast the switching is happening at the gate of this MOSFET. The 555 timer is set up in A stable output or A stable mode. That means pin 3 is going to either have zero voltage or a positive pulse. When a positive pulse is detected at the gate, it's going to allow current to flow from the 12 volt 1 amp switch mode power supply into the primary winding of the ignition coil into the drain of the MOSFET and then to the source which connects to battery negative. It's going to complete the circuit and the pulse in this winding is going to create the high voltage pulse in the secondary winding. Over here between the 100 ohm resistor and the 6.8K you have a voltage divider connecting to the gate of the MOSFET. Over here is a 0.01 microfarad or a 103 capacitor. Pin 2 and 6 are connected together Pin 4 and 8 are connected together as well. You have a 56 ohm resistor. This one limits current into the entire circuit. Where it says drive is the 100K potentiometer, and that's going to adjust the output at the high voltage coil. It's not going to change the frequency that the 555 timer operates. In order to do that, you're going to have to change the value of this capacitor. So if you use a lower value capacitor, it's going to increase the frequency and if you use a higher value, like a 1 microfarad, it's going to decrease the frequency. The 1 microfarad tantalum just adds stability to the top rail and the bottom rail. 
Now let's test out the ignition coils using the circuit. For the first test, I have the older oil-filled ignition coil connected. And you can see I have this ignition tester right here. The spark should jump between here and this tip as soon as I turn on the circuit. Here we go. And as you saw, there's no problem at all with that coil. You can let it run 15 to 30 seconds just to make sure that the high voltage winding is not breaking down internally. If you decide to run it longer than that, then I suggest you use the 1 ohm 10 watt resistor in series with the power to the primary winding. The circuit is now connected to the Yamaha ignition coil. To reduce the amount of current going into the primary winding, I added the 1 ohm 10 watt resistor. Keep an eye right over here. And the test shows the coil is just fine. For the Hyundai Sonata ignition coil, I'm going to be leaving in series the 1 ohm 10 watt resistor. We're going to be checking the output between these two terminals because that's the highest voltage. And there's plenty of power at the output. Now I'm going to take one of these off and let's just connect it to the ground or negative because you're going to see it's going to be much, much less. Let me turn this all the way in. Let's put it down there and see what happens. You can see that space is jumping. The one thing you want to make sure you have is a good heat sink because this can heat up. You do not want to get this too hot. If it gets too hot, you're going to damage the MOSFET. This is a really useful test circuit for a person that works on small engines cars, trucks, boats, or jet skis. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.